I didn't expect Poco India to level up the X series to this extent. The new Poco X6 Pro is technically even more powerful than the Poco F5 and I've been using it for a week. So I've got a very juicy, information dense review for you. Go get your popcorn, park yourself in a very cozy corner for the next 10-15 minutes. I'm going to take you guys for a fantastic ride. And by the way, if you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad, you're watching Track and Take English, your destination for detailed incisive gadget reviews. I really want to start off by talking about the performance of the Poco X6 Pro because that's where the brand has hit it out of the park, especially with the hardware specs on offer. Not only do you get for the very first time MediaTek's Dimensity 8300 Ultra, which is based on TSMC's 4 nanometer fabrication process, you also get LPDDR5X RAM type and UFS 4.0 storage, which is why the storage read write speeds are absolutely through the roof. And if you're considering buying the phone, it's available in two variants, 8GB, 256GB or 12GB. 512 GB. Now, the Dimensity 8300 Ultra itself is a very powerful flagship SoC. It's definitely more powerful than any other mid-range chip that we've seen in phones until 2023, including the very powerful Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 inside the Poco F5. We got an Android score of over 1.4 million, which is slightly higher than the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 inside the Nothing Phone 2 and the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. We also ran Geekbench, where the single core score was not as high as the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, but the multi-core score was matched up. Now these are regular benchmarks but what I prefer doing is throttling benchmarks and we couldn't run 3 Mark wildlife stress test like we could it on the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus because Xiaomi generally seems to be uh, you know blocking 3 Mark before the launch of these phones so even the Poco X6 Pro doesn't have that option. But we did run the CPU throttle test and in our 43 30 minute test we got a CPU stability of 79% when we actually engaged the performance mode and in balance mode we actually got 82% CPU stability. And these numbers are actually very respectable in my opinion. Now, if you like playing BGM, I feel like the 8300 Ultra hasn't been optimized to its extent yet. Now you can play 90 FPS at smooth graphics, but if you want to play 60 FPS, you will still have to play at smooth graphics. You cannot even bump it up to medium graphics. COD Mobile on the other hand runs at 120 FPS with medium graphics and ultra settings, which is the same as even the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for that matter. But you know what? We also did some real world Genshin Impact testing and you guys know that Genshin Impact is one of the most graphically intensive games out there. So we played the game for 30 minutes at the highest graphics and 60 frames per second. Now we got an average FPS of about 56.7 FPS and what I did notice in my gameplay is that the FPS actually the frames dropped to about 40 to 44 in intense battle sessions and I think that's absolutely fine because this phone is priced under rupees 30,000. This performance is fantastic to begin with. Now while playing Genshin Impact the phone did get warm at about the 20-25 minute mark. It didn't get unbearably hot so it's okay I don't see a problem there. Now as for gaming specific features you also do get the ultra game mode and you get a basic touch sampling rate of 240 Hz, which bumps up to 480 Hz when you switch on the wild boost mode. That apart, you also do get an instant touch sampling rate of 2160 Hz as well. Basically, the touch response rate when I was playing the game was fantastic. Nothing to complain about. So overall, if you look at it, this is by far the best performing phone that you can buy under rupees 30,000. There's nothing to beat it right now until maybe a Snapdragon Agent 2 phone invades this price category, but I don't see that happening soon. So Poco, good job. Now with respect to network connectivity, the phone also supports 14 5G bands, which is more than enough and I tried Geo on this and it worked exceptionally well, no problem whatsoever. The call quality through the earpiece was good, it was crisp, it was loud, there was no call drop either and that apart the mobile data was pretty stable too. You also do get support for Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.4 and there's also support for NFC as well. Plus of course in most Xiaomi and Poco phones you can definitely expect that infrared blaster along with the remote control app that is pre-installed in the phone. So you're covered in all aspects when it comes to network technology but there's one thing that I noticed is that in my testing for some odd reason VONR didn't work which is basically voice over 5G on Geo's 5G network that could be a Geo problem itself but uh, I couldn't get it to work on the Poco X6 Pro. So whenever I would make a call the Geo network would switch to 4G Volti so that's what happened. One of the things that most people were expecting is for the phone to come with a 5500mAh battery because it is a rebadged version of the Redmi K70e but there are certain changes for example uh, the Poco X6 Pro actually comes with a 5000mAh battery and it supports 67 watt fast charging along with the charger inside the box. Now with that 67 watt fast charger you can expect the phone to charge from 0 to 100 in about 40 minutes. Also, I'm okay with the fact that Poco has shaved off a little bit of the battery, primarily because the battery life seems to be good. Unfortunately though, Hyper OS doesn't give us the option to actually see the screen on time, so I cannot give you that perspective. But what I did notice is that in my testing, the battery life was pretty good. So the phone lasted me about 22 hours with very, 
very heavy usage with 17% left in the tank, which I feel is very, very good. And when I wasn't actually performance testing the phone, it would last me even longer. So this is easily, uh, you know, a one and a half days battery life on moderate usage. I think the 8300 Ultra is actually tuned very well for battery performance. And if we could tell the screen on time data, then it would definitely last about seven to eight hours in my opinion. By the way, how important is screen on time for you guys? I would love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. And the most interesting, fun comments, I will definitely feature that in the next video that we shoot. Now let's talk about the design. And I'd say that it's okay. I mean, it's bland and uninspiring is how I'd put it. It's available in a bunch of colors. There's black, there's gray, and there's the yellow as well. But this gray variant itself has a polycarbonate back and it's a glossy polycarbonate back and it's very reflective and attracts a lot of fingerprints as well. But I do like this gray color a lot. What I'm not a fan of, however, is this camera module. Four rings slapped on a black plastic block is not my idea of, you know, a standout design. You know, this camera island reminds me of the time when, as kids, teachers would give us the assignment to draw a landscape. We all would end up drawing this same exact landscape. It's lacking in creativity, basically. Now, like I said, the back is made of polycarbonate, but the frame is also made of polycarbonate. Of course, it's reinforced with metal on the inside, but this is entirely polycarbonate, which actually does help keep the weight low. So the phone weighs about 190 grams. It's very comfortable to hold and use as well. And I have no concerns per se. Plus, apart from that, you also get a very slim uh, frame as well. So it's nice to hold in the hand. I have no problems over there. By the way, the phone also has a Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection on the front. And if you want a more premium material for the back, you can actually get the yellow variant which comes with patent leather. Now, one of the things that the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus has that the Poco X6 Pro doesn't, it is the IP68 rating. You do get IP rating, but it's only IP54 rating. How important is IP rating to you? Do you care for IP68 as much as, you know, you're okay with, uh, you know, compromising on that and going with IP54 on the Poco X6 Pro? Functionality-wise, almost everything is present, but there are a couple of things that are absent. Of course, the SIM card tray accepts only two nano SIM cards. You do not get support for a micro SD card slot. And that apart, the Type-C port at the bottom is USB 2.0 speeds only. It should have offered, you know, faster USB speeds because I think that should be a norm across all phones about 20,000 in 2024, but that's not really happening. Now, while the design itself might not be most exciting, it's functional, but what is very exciting is the display on the Poco X6 Pro. The first time you set your eyes on the phone, you're taken aback by how gorgeous the front actually looks. If you folks don't know already, I already love flat panels, and when the OEM ends up slimming down the bezels to being completely non-existent, I immediately go, it's so beautiful, it's so elegant, it's looking like a wow. I hate how overused that meme is, but does fit in this context, so I just have to throw it in. Anyway, talking about the specs, you get a 6.67 inch, 1.5K resolution POLED display, which is, you know, the highest resolution on a Poco phone yet. You also get 120Hz refresh rate and 100% DCI-P3 color gamut support as well. In fact, I'm particularly impressed by the color tuning of the Poco X6 Pro's display, especially in the original Pro color mode. It is pretty close to neutral and you can actually trust it for when you're video editing or photo editing on the fly. You also do get support for Dolby Vision, just like the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. I'm really glad that Poco didn't cut any corners out here. And when you're watching HDR content, whether it's on YouTube or on Netflix, the peak brightness touches a maximum of 1800 nits. Now, if you're wondering what is the uh, you know maximum brightness that you can get in HBA mode, it is 1200 nits. It's still a very crisp and bright panel, no doubt, even by 2024 standards where the peak brightness has touched like, you know, dizzying heights. You also do get a high frequency PWM dimming of 1920 Hertz, which definitely ensures that you do not face any sort of low light flicker on the high refresh rate display, especially when the brightness is low. Plus the in-display fingerprint scanner unlocks the phone really fast. Plus you get an X-axis linear vibration motor. It's pretty crisp, it's pretty tight. It's not the best haptic feedback out there, but it's very well tuned. I really like it, especially when you're like, you know, uh, sliding down the volume slider and you get that haptic feedback when you're doing that, it's damn nice. Now to close the whole multimedia setup, you also do get support for Dolby Atmos with a proper stereo speaker setup and the sound quality is actually rich and detailed. Not very loud, but very rich and detailed. Take a listen to it for yourself right next to the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus and let me know what you guys think.
As for the audio files in the house, of course, Poco also supports the LDAC and LHDC Bluetooth codec. Plus, you can also connect like a high-res USB DAC and listen to your wired earphones as well. Now, talking about the software, Poco actually pulled a fast one on Redmi by becoming the first Xiaomi brand to actually introduce HyperOS right out of the box. And this is with Android 14 out of the box, no less. You also do get the promise of two years of software updates and three years of security updates. HyperOS is super refined. It's a much better version of MIUI. It's a very light install as well. So the hardware software optimization is done really well. So it just flies at your touch. You get these new lock screen wallpapers. You've got the magazine effect wallpaper. All of that looks very impressive. The control center also looks very clean and refined now. You can also cut out subjects from a photo from inside the gallery app itself directly. Plus, you've also got a dynamic island-like implementation. When you put the phone in silent mode or when you have the battery saver function on, immediately it throws up like an island-like notification at the notch area. All that is great, but the phone is filled with a lot of bloatware apps. There are way too many unnecessary pre-installed games that come with the phone. Of course, all of those can be uninstalled, but they're all pre-installed by default. That's not it, there are dark patterns when you first set up the phone and you also get the branch metrics invasion too. So if you do end up buying the phone, you do not get a very clean operating system install. It's just filled with a lot of junk apps that you might never use. And you'll need about 30 minutes to clean up all of the apps and make like a clean setup. It's a little bit of an effort. All right, finally, let's talk about the cameras. And considering Poco's history with cameras, I wasn't expecting too much. In fact, I went in with very little expectations. But I came away surprised. Now, talking about the hardware specs, you get a 64 MP Omnivision OV64B sensor with OIS, and you also get an 8 megapixel ultra wide, a 2 megapixel macro, and you also get a 16 MP selfie camera. But let's take a look at the pictures. Now, the primary camera captures a good amount of details in daylight, and the sharpness is pretty good too. In fact, the color tuning is done close to neutral as well, which is something I really like. HDR performance is good, especially with the control of the highlights. But there is definitely a lot of shadow noise that hasn't been controlled well enough. However, it doesn't smudge out the details, which is a good thing. You also do get 2x in sensor crops or lossless zoom, which is fairly sharp and detailed too. No real complaints out here. Human skin tones are close to neutral and understated when you're shooting in non HDR situations and generally when you have even lighting. Portraits that we took had a decent, you know, softer simulated depth of field effect, but the edge cutout could have been slightly better. But pictures of people when you're shooting against the light and when the HDR fires, they have a slightly artificial over HDR look, but it's still very usable if you ask me. I have a feeling that the Dimensity 8300 Ultra Ultra's ISP actually is coming in very handy for Poco to give you a good camera experience. Where the primary camera actually loses out is in the low-light photography chops. You get weird artifacting, a lot of noise and smudged out details as well. That's also because the night mode hasn't been tuned very well in my opinion. It could have been way better. Another problem we generally notice with the phone is that it is a slow shooter, so you will end up with quite a few blurry shots, especially in less than you know, ideal lighting situations. Moving on to the 8 megapixel ultra wide, it is as detailed as 8 megapixel ultra wides go, but the color size consistency is actually pretty decent, which kind of took me by surprise. What isn't good is the HDR ultra wide and low light shots. 2 MP macros, on the other hand, are of course 2 MP macros, they're okay at best. Now, when we took selfies, they do capture close to real skin tones, but the HDR selfies and portrait selfies look pretty average. Now, one of the things that I noticed with the Poco X6 Pro is that it generally has a problem with controlling the exposure, especially when you're shooting, you know, people in HDR situations and there's like a light falling on your face from the side. Now, if you use the night mode for selfies, it is bound to make you look fairer than normal with the addition of very weird artifacts. I'm not a fan of the low light selfies. All right, moving on to videos, you can record 4K 30 FPS HDR videos with the Poco X6 Pro. I quite like the video recording quality and the sound quality as well, which is pretty crisp. So you can actually shoot 4K 30 FPS HDR videos using the Poco X6 Pro. And if you're looking at the HDR performance of the video itself, it's pretty above average, which is not too bad. My only concern is that EIS definitely has a lot of jellying effect, which is a bit of an annoyance when you're walking and shooting. Otherwise, it's pretty usable. The ultra wide angle camera can also shoot videos, but only at 1080p 30 FPS resolution. And when you're shooting with a selfie camera, you get 1080p 30 FPS HDR videos, but you can also shoot 1080p uh, 60 FPS non HDR videos. You get great stabilization, good skin tones, and decent HDR overall. I did actually like the selfie videos that I shot with the Poco X6 Pro. 4K video recording option would have been nice, but that's not available. There are a bunch of new changes to the camera app, especially after the HyperOS update. First of all, if you swipe down the camera viewfinder, you can directly jump into a bunch of settings, which is very nice. You also get a couple of creative modes in the form of short film pre-rendered animations 
and the long exposure options as well. By the way, when you click on the more option and that more page opens up, you get these weirdly colorful icons which are completely different looking from, you know, the rest of the camera UI, which I felt was kind of odd. So the camera performance of the Poco X6 Pro gets a B plus from me. And for me, that's like a huge step in the right direction, primarily because Poco phones have generally not been great with cameras and the X6 Pro actually changes that, which is a good thing. Do you guys want to see any camera comparison of the Poco X6 Pro with any other phone? Let me know in the comments below. We'll try to do that for you. It's actually very easy for me to recommend the Poco X6 Pro. It's easily become one of my favorite phones under rupees 30,000 now. And for me as a consumer, it makes the right kind of compromises because I don't really care too much about a curved display or IP68 rating on a phone under rupees 30,000. I'm okay with IP54 rating. I don't really need a 200 megapixel camera. And I definitely don't need Corning Gorilla Glass Victus if that's going to cost me extra. What I want is genuinely great performance. I want a decent camera performance and good battery life. All of that along with fast charging speeds, all of that is possible on the Poco X6 Pro. Which makes me wonder, among the audience that is watching this video, who would actually prefer the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus over the Poco X6 Pro? I'd love to know. And why? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this review of the Poco X6 Pro useful. Uh, I had a lot of fun testing it. And uh, you know, if you did like it, do give us a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.